Good morning, YouTube land. It's time to wake up. We are waking up. I know it feels good. Stretch. Drink a cup of coffee. Wake up. We're alive. We're alive in the Lord. Take a drink of coffee. Go ahead. Now, I am not one of those up to date, in the minute, like, oh my gosh, now look what's going on type of person because I don't have time. All I have time for is praising the Lord, reading my Bible, and just feeling these strong, strong, like invisible contractions that something is getting ready to be birthed. And I have no idea what I'm talking about. And as, as like stupid as that may sound, it is ironic to be a Christian and, and just to know that nobody wants to talk about the Lord, nobody lives their life according to, you know, what God says. And people out in the world are just doing their own thing. People are doing their own thing and they don't even know that they're on the highway to hell. You know, and as much as I want to laugh about it, because that's like an ACD song that I used to listen to. It's, you know, when you're, when you give your life back to the Lord, you're a brand new creature in Christ. I said it, you are a brand new creature in Christ. That means whatever you did five years ago, that's not you today. And that's the number one thing that the enemy likes to throw in our face, is our past. <laughs> you know, it's not until recently I was doing the dishes like a couple of days ago and the Lord told me, why do you keep carrying that baggage around with you? And I, I'm serious, I was totally having a conversation, like it seemed like I was having a conversation with myself, but I clearly heard a, an angelic, you know, voice of reason, saying, whom the Lord sets free is free indeed. And it's like, you know, you hear this stuff and you read it in the Bible, but it comes at a, at a moment when you're not even expecting it, and it just kind of taps on your shoulder when no one's around. And it gives you confirmation. And then you're able to, like, you know, renew your mind because it's a battle. As long as we live in this world, it is a battle for our time. Like people like to be entertained now. And in all the entertainment and all the, um, the killing time saying, you know, I'm just killing time because I'm not going to let time kill me. You know, that's my idea as well and that's my thought but you know what as you as you like mature in the Lord you read things and you apply it to your life because you know that we're living in the last days we we so are 
We so are. And I know people don't understand this. And before I even hit start video on this, I was thinking, okay, how am I going to, like, um, involve my subscribers to really pray with me about the non-believers, the mockers, the scoffers, the naysayers, you know, call them what you want. I just call them the Antichrist. The Antichrist. That means they don't want anything to do with Jesus. They don't want anything to do with his free gift of salvation. They don't want anything to do with their creator's escape plan. And this is serious because when you see what's going on in the world and you understand and apply it to the Bible prophecies, prophecies are events that have not happened yet. Now one of them, I know, Psalm 83, that just came to my mind. Damascus shall be a ruinous heap. That may not be the correct psalm. It could be a different one. But there is a verse in the Bible that says, Damascus shall be a ruinous heap in the last days. And what do you see happening over there in that area? Like right now, today, as I speak. You know, our volcanoes are waking up more and more and more and more. And the earthquakes are rumbling, like more and more frequently. And in the last days when Jesus was warning people, it's in Matthew, it's in Luke, it's in Revelation. You know, I feel bad for the people that, that mock and scoff at all the Christians and all the people that are trying to wake each other up. You know, we have to stick together. We totally do. Because we are the body of Christ. And we all have our different duties and our different functions. And if we're not doing our part, you know what I mean? I, I was stuck in my comfort zone too a couple years ago. I was so hooked on the fear porn videos. And I still am. I like watching mudslides. Not on top of people, but I like watching bridges just fall down. I like the destruction of man-made things. Because God didn't make them, so they're not going to last. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we're in the days where everything is just tumbling down. Everything. But one thing that I want to tell you guys, don't let anybody rob you of your faith, especially in these days. Do not conform to this world, especially in these days. I have so many do nots. <laughs> Just like our Heavenly Father. Do not. And the reason why there's a couple of do nots is because He loves us. And He knows the enemy is here to trick us. That's why it says, Do not be deceived in the last days. Don't just listen to people and take them at face value. Do your own research. Seriously. You know, you, you are going to have to um, be accountable for your own self when you stand before the Lord. 
You know, if you're doing bad things and if you're thinking bad things, you know what I mean? And everybody does. But every day, if you could just start your day thanking God for what you are, for who you are, for what you've been through, for what He's brought you through. Because, see, He knows what is in our future. But we don't. And he knows what the enemy is going to throw at us. But we don't. And he knows that this government and this one world order, this new world order, this one world religion, one world religion, and Jesus isn't even a religion. He's a relationship. He's God's son that, that was here over 2,000 years ago to, to do away with religions. He knew that religion was full of hypocrisy. He knew that those priests were we're making these laws and putting them on the ordinary people knowing that those same lawmakers weren't going to keep those laws. Doesn't that sound so grossly like familiar? Seriously. You know the government wants to do a a gun ban or a gun grab on American people and you know that's in our Constitution that we're allowed to bear arms and we're allowed to have these rights. But I'm telling you, it's happening before our eyes right now that the corrupt governments are corrupt. <laughs> I want to read this quick thing and then I'm going to go. Prepare for the kingdom. God will soon replace the corrupt governments of our world. He is preparing a new world ruling government with Christ as king over all the earth and that's in Zechariah chapter 14 verse 9 he is also training us as kings and priests to assist the king of kings Revelation chapter 5 verse 10 will we have hearts of integrity as we near the end of this age, we all must strive to grow in the grace and knowledge of Christ. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. We must do our best with the help of the Holy Spirit to exemplify God's way in our own lives. May God bless all you readers as you follow Christ's command to watch and pray always. And as you prepare with your whole heart for your place in the coming kingdom of God, confident in God's promise, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that's Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. Now, I have to go in a few seconds, but if you're doing your Bible reading every day and you want to feed your spirit like what I do, I don't do it every day. I'm guilty at that. But what I'm saying is, Spend at least 30 minutes a day, every single day. Be imitators of God. Ephesians chapter 5. Therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love. Oh my gosh, I gotta go. I'll see you later. Bye.